we started as a spot market and the reason for that is we said from the very beginning this is going to be an Ethiopian exchange for Ethiopia. So why we've learned from the world's experiences uh, looking at uh, Chicago, uh, New York, London, uh, India, China, Argentina and even South Africa. Yeah. In the end what we created was ultimately a, very, uh, a market really tailored to Ethiopia's conditions. So we started as a spot and futures in the future right uh, so we're currently still a spot market and the okay. second thing is we started with an open outcry okay. floor okay. which is really a vestige of the past right because most of the markets have gone to fully electronic trading yeah but we said because our country really is you know still very early in the internet penetration mobile penetration yeah. we start with the trading floor so our two uh, next uh, innovations or where we're going next yeah. uh, is that we're going to now this year hopefully introduce uh, again, an appropriately designed futures contract okay. so that we really uh, start to enable people to do price risk management. Uh -huh. So we're looking at different models for, for introducing a futures contract, especially for coffee. Okay. Uh, and secondly, we hope uh, in this year to launch uh, electronic trading okay. because uh, now we feel that we've, we've four years down the road, we've built up the experience of what an exchange is, yeah. how to trade with standard terms, standard lot sizes, all those things. The discipline is there in the market. Right. So now we start to enable people to access our trading system remotely. Yeah, how then do you make peasant farmers understand? Because a big part of your innovation is that you're really targeting small scale farmers here. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking small scale farmers and uh, futures contracts and trading and managing risk, etc. Well, like how big a take up do you expect? Well, like everything else we've done, yeah. it's always carefully, carefully designed. Uh, really to to appeal to and to, to be tailored and appropriate yeah. for those who are trying to serve, which is the small actors, small farmers, yeah. small traders. Yeah. So in the case of, of futures trading, just a few days ago, somebody was giving me an example of uh, TF, you know, our indigenous grain, yeah. how many farmers sell the TF off the farm, off right. the field. So in other words, forward contracting. Where it's they already come, happening. It's, it's already there traditionally. So it's, a, it's not about creating something they've okay. never thought of. Okay. It's about creating a system that is transparent and reliable yeah. to do the things which are common sense for them to do. Okay. And that really has always been our principle. Okay. Um, now for online trading, uh, of course, Ethiopians, uh, the, the internet penetration is less than, than 1%. It is very so, small, I discovered in Addis when we were there for a while. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> so, of course, we hope that will change soon. Yep. But nonetheless, today, it's very difficult to envisage that, uh, you know, we're going to say we're going to do online trading and everybody will whip up their laptops okay, so, and yep. uh, link up and join our system. Yep. That's not how we're going to do it. We're going to do it in... A, again, an appropriate way in 20 regional markets around the country, particularly big sites for consumption and big sites for surplus production, we're going to have the equivalent of internet cafes uh, run by our okay. exchange, okay. where we have a, a bank of terminals managed by an IT support that we have in place with a small fee for using that facility, yeah. which we now give access to cooperative farmer, you know, farmer cooperatives, uh, small traders, etc., who don't have computers. Uh, who don't have the dial-up connections and the lease lay, you yeah, know, yeah, relationships yeah, with yeah, the telecom. Yeah, yeah. But we would have localized screens where in local language they will be able to read the instructions. Okay. And if they can, our philosophy is if they can use a mobile phone, yeah, they then they, can, they should be able the to use the localized screen. So that's how we're going to do four it. Four products so far. How yeah. many to go and by when? Uh, well, you know, with the four that we currently have, uh, the three in particular, coffee, sesame seed and beans, represent about 60% of the country's export earnings. Okay. So they are very important, even if small in number. Now the, the challenge or where we want to go next yeah. is to start to go to the domestic grains. Uh, wheat, maize, teff uh, and other sorghum, barley. Right. For example, the breweries are really looking to source barley in country right uh, they're looking to source sor sorghum in country for the for the big in, you know uh, brewery industries right. because uh, Diageo recently has come into Ethiopia yeah. Heineken has come into Ethiopia so the brewery industry is really looking to source uh, instead of importing barley to source it locally so we think we can become uh, a market where they can reliably source so we're going to start introducing things which have demand yeah. from industrial buyers okay. uh, so barley is one sorghum is one uh, of course wheat and uh, by the you know millers is another one so yeah. so we're going to go now into grains a bit more difficult because the supply mm. chain is, is not quite as 
uh, streamlined as yeah, the export yeah, channels, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we can do it. And there are challenges, of course, with the storage and all those other kind of things, yes. the costs associated yes. with it. But what about participation yes, by people outside Ethiopia? How far is that going? Do you have a plan where perhaps one day we're going to see all African commodities, if you like, soft commodities, maybe traded through uh, a, a, an exchange like yours? Absolutely. I sure hope so. That's the plan. So, but we have to get there uh, pole pole, as yeah. we say here in Tanzania. <laughs> uh, so, I think the way that we have to approach it yeah. is that uh, we are not trying to create a regional airline right. analogy, okay. but rather the modality to do code sharing among the airlines we are uh, going to create. Right. If, if you understand my, my meaning, which is that there are things which it makes sense to collaborate on yeah. and to do code sharing. Yeah. For example, maize. Okay. We, we all grow maize yeah. and it might be that there are there is one or two types of maize or contracts that seasonally will be very important for us to try to link uh, you know trading yeah but other times we may not want to so we want to have a flexible model mm -hmm. we were not all buying into one common thing that we which, which would take us 20 years to achieve because politically that will be very difficult we yeah. have to give up sovereignty over our uh, monetary regimes yeah, and inflation yeah, yeah, rates yeah. and you know so governments will be I think a little bit reluctant to jump into something totally like uh, totally regional in initially True. we'll get there but how we get there is to find the, the logic of when it makes sense for example uh, coffee huh? coffee is grown in all the region uh, of the East African community yes. and uh, you know, so Uganda Tanzania yeah, Rwanda Kenya. Ethiopia Kenya so now can we create a fine coffee East African fine coffee index Right. which others can le can trade off of because instead of saying what's the Rwanda price, what's the Ethiopia price, what's the Kenya price, it can be for Arabica, maybe Uganda is not part of the Arabica sure, circle, sure, 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 yeah. but for the other four countries, yeah. we have an East Africa Arabica yeah. co coffee index. As it is already, yeah. the ECX coffee index is now the second most visited link on the Reuters uh, commodity page uh, after the suffix uh, white maize price. So already we're becoming a reference market. There is demand for, there. For, so the world wants to look at our economies and say, this is the coffee index yeah. that we're going to track. Yeah. So I think if we do that and we link up, yeah. then it becomes a more meaningful index. Final question, Eleni. Now, of course, when you begin to grow, yes. with it come concerns. Now, a key concern for investors is, of course, liquidity and uh, price discovery mechanisms, the transparency of the process of getting into that. Yes. How are you managing that side of it? Well, transparency is everything. Uh, we're all about transparency. But mind you, not everybody uh, wants transparency or at least wants it the same way. Yeah, I know it in <laughs> government bonds, for instance, <laughs> these guys deal like, you know, one on one. Yeah. So, so transparency is, is a bit of a double edged sword because those who are happily living without transparency get a bit uncomfortable yeah. uh, when a, an entity like the exchange shows up. But in the end of the day, I think we live in the Google world. We are now, you know, in the information age where we should use information and yeah. transparency to do better business right. rather than uh, trying to make uh, big margins off of, uh, you know, uh, an opportunity where somebody doesn't know the price and I know the price. Yeah. That's not yeah. the way yeah. our business in Africa will be sustainable. Uh, I think it's to have reliable uh, supply chains, yeah. uh, fast transactions, yeah. high latency, you yeah. know, where things move fast. Uh, in terms of, of prices uh, responding very quickly and that comes when you have a more transparent system right. rather than where it takes you a long time to find what the price is and who this guy is and can I trust him that's slow business we have to move faster yeah. we have to do more trading liquid and for that an exchange is exactly